What's up guys? How are you all doing? Hey, today we're going to be checking out RT Android, which what this is, this is the the ability to install the Android operating system onto your Raspberry Pi and basically have your own little tablet or Android powered thing. If that sounds like something that you'd be interested in, please stay tuned. It's coming up right here right now on MI Sperry. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get started with this. We're going to be checking out how to install our RT Android, which is basically a small RT, uh, Android operating system, onto our Raspberry Pi. This is going to be the short video, so I'm just going to show you the quick and dirty way of doing it. If you would like more details on exactly how I did it, please check out the in-depth video. Link will be at the end of this video. So first thing we need to do is we need to go to uh, the link that brings you to the RT Android, uh, which will link will be down in the description. Uh, downloads, you're going to go to device updates and to Raspberry Pi, since that's what we will be installing it on today. Now you choose the latest distro. Uh, currently mine is this one right here. So you click that, you'll download it, it'll be a zip file. Now instructions for installing it are down here. The only drawback of this is that you need a Linux distribution to be able to do this. So I highly recommend downloading a virtual machine virtual machine, excuse me, um, so uh, from VirtualBox. VirtualBox is very simple. It's free. Um, I'll have a link down in the description. Download that virtual environment and then download a copy of Ubuntu Linux. That's the easiest and simplest one to download. Um, I'll probably put a link down there too where you can get a uh, version of Ubuntu. Excuse me, I smacked the microphone. Um, where you can get a version of that. And basically put that together. You'll find tons of YouTube videos on how to create a VM. Create that and then you'll have a Linux box that you can uh, load up your stuff with. So in the spirit of that, I've got mine all ready to go here. So once you get <coughs> excuse me, your Linux VM going, um, I copied the RT Android uh, zip file to the desktop of this uh, Linux box. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make... Uh, a directory called RT Android, and I'm going to move that uh, zip file into that folder, and we'll just do everything out of that folder. So I'm going to CD to RT Android. Inside there is our zip. We're going to we're going to perform the unzip command that is also in this down here. We've got it shows you how to do the unzip. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to say unzip the RT Android zip file dash D and a period for unzipping it in this folder. So we're going to hit go and we will let that unzip. All right. Now that that has finished unzipping, now we should be able to uh, check out what's in there. So you're going to be using this install script. So the first thing we need to do is we have to find our SD card. So I put an SD card in an SD card reader and attached it to the VM. So it should be there. So we're going to do a sudo F, F disk, if I can type dash L to do a disk listing, all right? So now the disk that I have is a 32 uh, gigabyte uh, drive, basically, and it is located on dev SDB, okay? Now yours might be different depending on what kind of drives and whatnot and how you've set up your VM, but basically mine is, is SDB. Remember this, you'll need that. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna install it. We're gonna do a dot slash on install, and we're going to do a dash P dash F. Those are the switches. And then we're going to type that in dev SDB. That's all you got to do. Hit enter. This will fully install it and uh, decompress the image and everything. But before we do that, one thing before we do that, before we do that install command, we need to set up any video drivers that you need. Now, most of the time, the initial setup is just fine. It should work on any TV. But if you're wanting monitors and whatnot, you may have to uh, refer to documentation, uh, which I'll put a link down in the description for about changing up your settings. To do this, you have to CD to the boot, or at least to do this real quick before you install, CD to the boot folder. Inside here, you'll find the config.txt file. You want to edit that. For mine, it's going to be mine. This needs to be group one and it needs to be mode four for 720p 60 hertz output for a monitor. And that's what I have to do to change those uh, video settings. Like I said, the default should probably be fine for most TVs and whatnot if you're going to be hooking up TVs or monitors or any HDMI thing. But most of the time, but like my video capture card, it takes special settings. So you write that out or save that basically. And then you will perform the dot slash install dash P dash F uh, device SDB and hit enter. That will install it. 
Okay, so once it finishes installing, okay, so now it has finished installing through the miracle of time. So what it will do is it basically will copy those boot files over and it'll uncompress the image and everything and write everything uh, out. So now we should be good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shift gears and we're going to get a bench view here. I've got a little keyboard that I like to use here uh, plugged into our Raspberry Pi. And I'm going to go ahead and pull the SD card out. Pull that out, put it in. Now, it's not unusual for this to take a long time to boot first time go, especially if you're using a uh, SD card that has a slower speed. So be patient, let it boot, okay? So I'm gonna hook that in and then we'll, I'll throw some power to it. Let me get uh, our view of the output, okay? I'm gonna throw the power to it. And then we should give it a second and hopefully it will boot up with our RT Android. So it looks like we got a good boot going on. This is what we want to see, RT Android. And like I said, sometimes this takes a little bit to come up. Um, I'm using a pretty fast uh, SD card. Uh, I think I can remember mine's UCS 10 or what? I don't know. I can't remember those things. They, they update all the time. But it's, it's one of the extremes by ScanDisk. So then you should have your Android starting. And there we go. And now if you want to navigate around, you just use your little keyboard. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna turn it on and you basically get a cursor. Now, if you get like a touch screen or something like that, you can actually make it more like a tablet. But for me, I've just got, I'm sorry, I keep hitting the deal. Um, I've just got this. So to set up your Wi-Fi, mine's already uh, configured because I've actually already installed this. You're gonna click on that little arrow. You're gonna go to your settings. It's just like your phone. If you own an Android phone, there's your Wi-Fi. You'll have to turn it on, you click it. Um, up here, it'll be off. <clears throat> you just have to turn it on and then pick your deal and Bob's your uncle, right? Okay, so that is a quick and dirty run through of how you get your uh, Android device up and running on a Raspberry Pi. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and share and all that jazz so that way you don't miss out on anything that's going on as well as hit that like button or hit that you know thumbs up, thumbs down button, whatever, uh, whatever you please. But it definitely helps uh, when I get that thumbs up. It definitely helps the videos get higher and helps me keep bringing you good content. So guys, thank you very much. Take care and I will see you next time.